Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. And today on Ask the Expert, I'm speaking with attorney Tristan Morrison with the law firm of Morrison and Hughes in Marietta, Georgia, part of the sprawling Atlanta area. Tristan, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Steve. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no, no problem. Love, love having you here. Hey, tell me a little bit about yourself and your firm. Sure. Well, like you said, my name's Tristan Morrison. I've been practicing law in Georgia for about a decade, mostly helping people uh, and handling injury claims. Uh, I'm also licensed to practice law in California, but I'm only going to be, going to be talking about uh, Georgia law today. Uh, we are here with Morrison and Hughes Law. Like you said, we're kind of on the west side of Atlanta, and we, we help out folks all over the state of Georgia. Um, we handle personal injury claims. A good example of that would be things like car accidents, dog bites, slip and falls, uh, the typical thing that people think of when they think of um, lawsuits. Now, we also help people out with Social Security disability claims. Uh, folks usually need that when, a good, uh, when they have a good work history, uh, but a health condition or an accident makes it so that they can't work anymore. And so you go to the Social Security Administration and get on disability benefits, and we help people to do that. But we also handle workers' compensation claims, uh, which I believe is what I'm here to talk with you about today. Yeah, and I noticed there was an emphasis on workers' comp on, on your website, so I thought that would be good to, to chat about. And tell me, what, what is workers' comp? Well, workers' compensation is a law that applies to almost every employer in every state. Uh, and in Georgia, employers with three or more employees are required to have workers' compensation insurance. In fact, not having that insurance is actually both a crime and can lead to civil penalties for employers. Um, so even very, very small businesses are required by law to have workers' compensation insurance. It basically covers anyone, anyone at all who gets hurt because of their work. Uh, this is true even if the accident is totally the fault of the injured worker. So let me say that again. Workers' compensation is a no-fault system. If you make a mistake and get hurt at work, you're still covered. And of course, the benefit to the employer is that if they make a mistake and hurt you, they're also covered, and that's why they have the insurance. So it's kind of like a big insurance claim. Uh, if you get hurt at work, then really your only option is to file a workers' compensation claim rather than a personal injury lawsuit, because the law says that the employer has that is it, that's the exclusive remedy that an employee can get against an employer, meaning that you can't sue your your employer for a for accidentally hurting you outside of workers' compensation. So regardless of whose fault it is that someone gets hurt, that there's workers' compensation to cover it. I see. Okay. Now, can I just assume then that I'm covered? Well, for the most part, you can. Very, very small businesses with just a sole proprietor, when they hire on one other person to do some work, that person may not be covered. But Generally speaking, if you're working and you get hurt, chances are you're covered. Uh, lots of employers these days are trying to label employees as independent contractors. Right. So they'll give them a 1099, even though they're paying them on an hourly basis and having almost complete control over the work that this employee does. And the employer thinks that that's going to eliminate the requirement that they get work comp insurance, and they dodge some tax requirements that way as well. But, but the reality is that unless you've signed a lock-solid written independent contractor agreement, if you get hurt at work, you probably still have a workers' compensation claim. So your employer may swear up and down that you're an independent contractor or that you're not entitled to workers' compensation. Don't trust them. Call an attorney. Call us. I see. Now, if, if I, I've been hurt at work, how is workers' comp going to benefit me? Well, workers' compensation basically gives an injured worker three things. The first is that you're covered for your medical treatment. The insurance company is required to pay for any reasonably necessary medical care that arises out of that work accident. So if you need to go to an orthopedic surgeon, you're covered. If you need to go to physical therapy, you're covered. If you have a traumatic injury and you need psychological care, that's covered as well. So anything medical that's necessary from the work accident is going to be covered for you. 
The second thing is wage replacement. If you get hurt at work and you're not able to work at all, then you're entitled to what are called temporary total disability benefits up to a maximum amount per week. So while you're out of work, the insurance company cuts you a check every week to cover some of your lost wages. And even if you go back to work, but you're not able to do as much work because you're on light duty work restrictions, then you may be entitled to some temporary partial disability benefits to make up the difference between what you were earning before your accident and what you're able to earn now. So there's income benefits to be had. And the third thing is what's called permanent partial disability. Once you've had all the medical treatment that your doctor thinks you need and you're as good as you're going to get, you may still have some partial disability. So for example, if you twist your knee and you need surgery, that knee's never going to be as good as it was before your accident. And once your doctor places you at maximum medical improvement, he's going to say, well, I think you have maybe a 5% impairment or a 10% impairment to your knee. And in that situation, the insurance company is responsible to cut you a check for a certain amount of money based upon how much of an impairment you have. So there's a couple of different things that workers' compensation covers. There's also some things that workers' compensation does not cover. For example, pain and suffering damages. Now, I have car accident clients who get pain and suffering damages because they were hurt by the fault of another person. Or they may be entitled to punitive damages, for example, if they get hit by a drunk driver. But in workers' compensation, there are no pain and suffering damages. There are no punitive damages because it's a no-fault system. Mm, no fault. Yeah, that's the key. Now, when a person gets injured, and, and in this case, we're going to talk about being injured at work, but when you get injured, you're probably not thinking real clearly. What, what should somebody know in, in advance? Just good information to know uh, if they've been injured, things to keep in mind, it, it, just in case that, that ever happens. And that's a great question, Steve. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is I like to educate people on how to spot a work injury. Uh, the most common accidents that I see are injuries to the back or the knees or a broken bone, lifting injuries, slipping injuries. These people are all entitled to workers' compensation. But there are lots of different kinds of accidents that are covered by workers' compensation. For example, gradual injuries, things that happen over time because of repetitive use. Oh. For example, someone who uses a jackhammer every day and they're bouncing up and down and they have a lot of vibration, that may hurt your neck over time or your wrists and you may develop problems with it. And when you report that injury to your employer, they're required to send you to a doctor so that you can get treatment for that. So a gradual injury is also compensable and those people are entitled to benefits. People who have the loss of sight or hearing from being allowed around loud machines, they're entitled to workers' compensation, even if that's only a partial loss of their sight or their hearing. Someone who has a heart attack or a stroke because of extreme work conditions, like extremely hot work conditions, that's something that I see sometimes. If a doctor comes in and says, yes, I think that this heart attack was caused by the work conditions in the work, in that situation, that may also be covered by workers' compensation. Um, and in workers' compensation, we like to talk about quote-unquote accidents. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be accidental. Uh, if you're the victim of a crime at work, mm. then you, you're probably entitled to workers' compensation if you get hurt. For example, I have a client who was shot while he was a cashier and he was held up. It was an armed robbery by a bunch of kids who came in in Halloween masks, and they shot him right in the neck and his employer took him to the hospital. And I was called several months later because he was despondent and didn't know what to do. Uh, he hadn't been given any more medical treatment. He hadn't been getting any income benefits. And the reality was that even though it wasn't technically an accident, I mean, those kids meant to shoot him, but even though it wasn't an accident, he was entitled to workers' compensation because he was hurt in the line of duty. Uh, so, you know, another example of victims of violent crime are people who are raped at work and that's always a sad situation but people who are raped by a co-worker sexually molested somebody who's caught in a dark parking lot we help those people out as well because even though they're not technically working at the time they're on the premises and they're in the course of going into work or leaving work and that's covered as well generally speaking so 
There's all sorts of workers' compensation claims that may not be immediately obvious. If your employer sends you to the tropics and you catch an unusual disease, that's work comp. Mm. If you're exposed to chemicals or radiation at work and you develop cancer, that's work comp. If you have an allergic reaction to something that you only come across at work, like latex gloves, that's work comp. So we help people with all those different kinds of things. And that's how you spot a work injury. Basically, you just ask yourself, did this happen because of my work? I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. Good. good. When you get hurt at work, it's extremely important that you report it to a supervisor. And you tell that supervisor, look, I got hurt in the course of doing my work. I need some medical treatment. Uh, And then explain to them the parts of your body that were injured. Don't ever leave out different parts of your body. A very common situation that we find is that somebody has a traumatic injury. You know, for example, when they're hit by a forklift uh, and, you know, their foot will be run over and they'll have a back injury and they'll go to the doctor and they'll say, my foot really hurts. But they don't say anything about the other injuries that they've had because the foot is the most extreme injury. And then the doctor or the clinic writes down foot injury and nothing else. So it's extremely important that the person who's injured tell the employer and the doctor, all the different parts of their body that have been injured. Now, that's great advice. Now, if, if I return to work, do I still get the workers' comp? Absolutely, you do. Okay. Uh, a workers' compensation claim does not end when you return to work. It doesn't even end if you quit, get fired, or get laid off. Although I recommend that if any of those things looks like it's on the horizon, you do call an attorney. Uh, but I have people, for example, who have left the state you know, they get a better job offer in a different state and they call me up and they say, hey, I'm now in a different location. I need a different doctor. Does my workers' compensation claim continue to live even though I'm no longer in Georgia? And it absolutely does. You're still entitled to those benefits. Do, Do I always need a workers' comp lawyer? No, not necessarily. Um, a lot of people have small accidents at work. I mean, if people come in with a cut finger or an accident that's very minor where they've gone back to work and they're done getting medical treatment, we usually turn them away because we're not, we're not in the business of handling very small injuries. However, for any major injury, and you know injuries where you've lost a significant amount of time from work or where it looks like you're going to lose some time from work, I absolutely recommend that people consult a lawyer. Even if it's not our firm, talk to somebody. Because for a serious claim, if you handle it without a lawyer, you're playing Russian roulette. You know, the adjuster is going to be calling. They're going to be trying to get you to give a recorded statement, which they plan to use against you later. The employer and the insurance company are going to be sending that you to their own doctors that they frequently use and whom they have a relationship with. And, you know, I tell my clients, never give a recorded statement without talking to a lawyer first and always send me anything that you're planning on signing and sending back to the insurance company. Uh, you know, you really don't want to go into battle uh, against an insurance company who has extreme expertise in minimizing your claim. And I hear very frequently from people, you know, I spoke with my adjuster and she seems really nice. Mm. She's, you know, she's calling me, checking up on me to see how I'm doing. It's easy to forget that the most important job that an adjuster has is minimizing your claim and working to deny you benefits. So there's a lot of smiling to your face in the process of then documenting your claim in order to try to shut it down as quickly and as cheaply as possible. And you need somebody, you need an attorney to help you navigate that minefield. Well, and really it's about getting what you have coming. It's about fairness. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you don't have somebody who knows the rules, then you are not going to get what's coming to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the most common question you get? I get a lot of questions and complaints about industrial clinics. That's probably the the most common topic that uh, I discuss with employees when they come into my office for the first time. And it usually happens something like this. You know, they'll say, I told my employer that I had an accident and they told me that I had to go to this industrial clinic. You know, and they're these big shops that handle a lot of work accidents kind of in bulk. And inevitably, um, well, let me back up for a minute and explain kind of the way that, that doctors are handled in workers' compensation. Every employer should have posted at their work site what's called a panel of physicians in a prominent location. And 
when they have that panel properly posted, then they are entitled to send you to a doctor that is on that panel. Unfortunately, you don't get to just pick your own doctor. You can't pick your family doctor. You can't pick your neighbor. You have to choose one of the doctors on the panel if it's properly posted and they help you to use it. And so you're entitled to that very limited amount of choice amongst the you know six to eight doctors that are typically on a panel of physicians. And inevitably, there's going to be two industrial clinics on that panel because that is the most that Georgia law will allow them to put onto the panel. So typically what I see is employers or insurance companies steering people towards these panels, uh, I'm sorry, towards these clinics on the panel. Uh, and then they go to the clinic and they'll have multiple injuries, but they, the insurance company will call up ahead of time and say, well, you're only authorized to treat this person for their foot injury, even though they hurt their foot and their back and their neck. And then the industrial clinic will document that there's a foot injury dutifully and also provide treatment for that foot injury, but I'll get the medical records back and there won't be anything about the neck injury or the back injury. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so people get very dissatisfied uh, with, you know, telling the doctor, look, I've got all these problems and the doctor's saying, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I haven't been authorized to treat any of that. So the minute that you end up as a, an employee being sent to a clinic for a serious accident, call a lawyer. Absolutely. And how, how do we reach you, Tristan? Well, you can either go to my website, www.MorrisonHughesLaw. That's M-O-R-R-I-S-O-N. Hughes is H-U-G-H-E-S Law, L-A-W dot com. Or you can call us at 404-800-LAWS. That's 404-800-5297. We're happy to talk to anybody. Our guest today on Ask the Expert has been Tristan Morrison with the law firm of Morrison & Hughes. We've gotten a lot of good information about workers' comp. But Tristan, thanks for being on the show today. Steve, I really appreciate it. I hope we can help people. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.